Jacob, thanks so much for being on the Peppercast. So stoked to have you and can't wait to hear all the crazy things we're about to talk about. Always an honor to be interviewed and to chat with people. And it's the coolest part of our community. So yeah, thanks so much, Brad. Dude, your your work just speaks for itself. I feel like you came on the scene and you just exploded because your work's so unique. You can you can look at a photo and know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's yours. I think that's oh, really well thank you. Yeah, I, like it comes from I think it was your first interview actually. Like I attended one of Sam Hurt's workshops uh, when I first started. And um, you know, he had so many great takeaways for the technical aspect of photography and all that stuff. But for me it was the kind of blaze your own trail type of message that he always puts out. And, um, yeah, that just stuck with me. And ever since then, I was just like, I don't really care what people think of my work. Like, I'm just going to create whatever comes to mind and try it out. Because if you don't try, like, what's the what's the point in even doing any of it, you know? Um, yeah. So it was, um, yeah. Thank you for the compliments. I always never know how to handle them, but uh, I just take photos. Like, I just, yeah. It's... Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm terrible. I always feel like when someone um, says something nice to me or like a peer recognizes my work or whatever I'm doing, I'm like, really? Like, I'm just this nerd in Canada, like, way up here. Like, who am I? I'm, I just, I'm, a, I'm just nobody. I feel yeah. like a, a lot it's... of us feel that way. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's not even, um, exclusive to what we do right like i think it's a human psychology thing where we, we always kind of struggle with compliments um because we never think we're doing anything extraordinary but sometimes we do like sometimes we'll create a photo and it'll just resonate with someone so deeply that it is extraordinary to them we should be proud of that because if we didn't make that photo and have confidence in ourselves and what we do, that person may have never run across our photo it inspired them to do something more, do something better, do something different. That's <clears throat> really what photography is to me. It's something way bigger than just making pictures, even though I say, like, I just like making photos. But it's, I share everything because I, I hope to reach people like that. Then what's your underlining, like, full, right down to your core reasoning to do what you do or how you do the things that you do? <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, I think when I started off, it was just it was it was more of a like I realized it was the first thing in my life that I could excel at, um, and that I was receiving compliments on, and that so I just stayed on that road and just started shooting things honestly, just to make cool looking stuff, right? Really interesting, interesting pictures. Like it, it's I've always been a very hands on and visual and audible type person like that's the things that reach me so when I found something that I could do that was visual I knew it could reach other people so I think it started as just kind of that um but now it's gotten into the more I evolve which I think is the most important part of what we do like you have to challenge yourself to grow and evolve as an artist um I think now it's like it's sharing like the other side of me like that's the way because like yeah i'm a pretty silly guy you know um but through this through my work in these little short videos that i even make like it's all it's all a part of me that this is the medium that i can let all that out i remember you told me once that you would listen to the same music over and over again for hours while you were mm -hmm. creating do you still do that Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I have a, so anytime if I'm shooting for clients or if I'm shooting a personal project, like I always choose a song before I start the session or the event. Um, and that's, that's the soundtrack that's playing in my head while I'm creating. Um, and I just want to create imagery that goes with that, how that piece of music makes me feel no matter what it is. It could be, um, you know, yeah, most of the time they're very melodic, you know, and Kali type stuff like really ambient um called like i think the genre is post rock so it's like explosions mm -hmm. in the sky or this will destroy your mobile um yeah and i've always loved music like that because there's no there's no vocals involved so it's just you're just kind of going with the waves of the sounds that you hear 
Um, yeah. And it just kind of takes my mind on a journey. So that helps me stay focused with whatever I'm shooting because I'm just trying to match up pictures that go with that, the feeling that song gives me. It kind of takes my mind away from like, okay, I need to get these 30 photos and then I got to make sure by 2 p.m. I get these two. It's just like, no, I just show up and play with my cameras. Obviously at weddings, like there's timelines and stuff, but I even tell my clients, I'm like, hey, like really just give me the address and time of where I need to start. And then I'm yours for the day. Like I follow you around. I, I don't need structure like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so really the only important things to me, like on a client wedding timeline is the time and address where I need to start. And then the group shots that they make sure they want to get that's pretty much it everything else like i'm just there to tell their story um and yeah if i get structure involved and i just it just turns into kind of a job for me which it is Mm -hmm. but i'll lose my my train of thought when it comes to creative thinking and stuff do you still get clients though that try and come to you with a shot list or like with a lot of structure and they're maybe more high anxiety and they don't just trust you to do what you need to do. You still get yeah, it. sure, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I think I think most people, even when you, even when you're in it for a few years and you find your ideal clients, whatever that definition may be. For me, it's just um, you know whoever sees what I do, um, and like I don't have a certain type of client that I'm going for, like what they look like or what their ethnicity is or. Mm-hmm what their um, what their sexual orientation is like we're all people like love is absolutely love so whoever wants to hire me like for my work like, it's, yeah let's do this I think the most important thing about the job side of things is you have to set the expectations so you have to you have to talk with them um, so I usually try to set up a consultation where I just go in depth about what I do and how I see a wedding day um, and I can back up that I'm going to provide them with a unique set of images that I don't go into a wedding the weekend after one I just shot. and like, oh, I did this shot last week and let's try it again this week. Like, no, everybody's story is different. So I go in with a fresh new mind for everything that I shoot. That's awesome. Are you still thinking about, so you're talking, talked about before about the evolution, the evolution of your art and pushing yourself and you're always pushing like your creativity and the bounds of that. Um, are you still thinking also about maybe breaking into the commercial industry a bit more? Yeah. Um, it's a, I I haven't done a lot of research, so I just got done speaking at a conference for a company called Minted, which Mm. is out of San Francisco and they have ties. Um, it's mainly their artists are a lot of illustrators. Um, they do like wall art and greeting cards and stuff like that, but they have ties with West Elm and Target um, and I actually shot the event for them too down in Vegas. So that was kind of my first intro into that little world. But yeah, it's also one of those things where I would obviously love to break into that market, but I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say that I know how to do that or that I have something in place because I don't, you know. Um, it's more like, it's more what, like, what are, what is driving you still? So yes, creativity and all this great stuff. And I love that. But what is the thing where you're like, you wake up in the morning, like, fuck, like, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm loving what I'm doing. I have so much gratitude. I love my clients. Like you're creating some amazing stuff or like, this is like where I really see myself pushing forward to. I mean, what, what ultimately drives me is like these, these ideas that I do have and that, that I do get the opportunity to wake up every morning and say, okay, I'm going to create this today and I'm going to try to make $3,000 off of just this series, right? Like whether it's through selling prints or um, trying to get an exhibit somewhere, whatever it is, um, or catching the eye of a commercial client by shooting, you know, some fashion or something. Yeah, them. it's like your creative projects are so cool. They're so, like, do you, do you shoot a creative project that's like, could be this really great like ad campaign and then send it to a brand and you're like, Hey, I think this would really align with what you I've do. never, I've never done any of that. Um, I, uh, I've read a little about like breaking into like the agency world. Um, and from what I've heard from other photographers that do have agents and work with agencies is that they, 
it's not just, um, hey, we really like your work. We'd love to try and represent you. Like there's a financial thing tied to it too, where you mm. have to show proof that like you do really well for yourself, which for me, I find really strange. So I think that's what's been holding me back from sending out like even just um, an online portfolio of my work to agencies because what do I have to lose? Um, but yeah, they want to look into my personal finances and stuff. Like that. Oh. <laughs> what does any of that even matter when it comes to creating, right? <laughs> like I was thinking um, when I first met you, uh, that was at Let's Go. I think it was the very first Let's Go yeah. workshop. That, yeah. that started right back yep. in like how many years in November, like three years ago it would be three years. Yeah. It'll be yeah, it was 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, Wild. it's crazy. Time is nuts. Time is yeah. nuts. And for me, that, that workshop was like a life changing moment where like your eyes are opened and you meet other creatives that inspire you or talk about the hardships they've gone through to even like be able to do what they do now and how they've overcome those things. Do you, sure. Like if you were to look back at yourself at Let's Go almost three years ago and you were to like look at your progress and your progression in your in your personal life, work life to now, what is what does that arc look like for you? Um yeah, so I think back at that time, my biggest struggle in life that I didn't realize was a was an issue at that time because I was totally addicted to social media. Um, I was going to ask you, but this is continue. Sorry. I get all excited. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was totally addicted to social media. It was, um, you know, numerous people brought it up to me. If they noticed I had a problem with it. Um, like I would be on a Twitter date and be answering Facebook messages from what's like film community. And I'm just like, now I look back and I'm like, you're supposed to be at dinner with someone that you, you know, apparently you're in love with and you're answering stupid messages like not that the people are stupid but like it's a question of like hey can you let my friend in the group <laughs> like that's not important yeah but you're also like the nice guy you probably just want to make everybody happy and comfortable and feel yeah. welcome and and that's and that's what it was but it was also like a deep-rooted addiction i think too um where almost my days were defined by like how well I did on social media, you know? Um, and nowadays it's like, I'm living such a quiet life and it's, it's one of those things. Like I tell people if they are struggling with social media, I'm like, I'm like log off for a month and then log back in and see how much people don't even care that you were yeah. not on social media. Yeah. Like it's not, it's just a thing that it's just a thing in the current times that we live in. Um, that's happening. Like, I left Facebook almost a year ago now. I like, noticed that. That was one of the things I wanted to ask you. Like, I haven't seen you on Facebook. This one, no. Every now and again, I'm like, what is Jacob up to? I'm like, he's not on here. Oh, but you're I still do. on Instagram. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just on Instagram because like there, um, I mean, I didn't get business from Facebook and I still don't get business from Instagram. Um, but Instagram is at least just a photo sharing app. So it's like, okay, I can share my work. I don't have to get into all these groups and do all this stuff. Um, Facebook was just a total time suck for me. Um, mm -hmm. just, just endless scrolling um, through stuff that really didn't affect my life in any way other than I was wasting energy and time on scrolling through this feed that... Yeah, now that I've been away from it, it's the best decision I've ever made. Right oh, I've been this close. I've been this close so many times to just deleting my face, my personal Facebook altogether. I still need it for Pepper and for the business. Sure. It's really like, great for keeping in touch with people. Maybe I keep Messenger, but Facebook itself, it just gives me so much anxiety. And it is such a time waster. I think after I kind of realized that like, oh, shit, yeah, I am totally addicted to this. Um just, it, it kind of changed my whole outlook on life to where it was like, okay, now I know uh, where to place my energy, where to invest my energy in things that, that matter, you know? It got heavy, like, you know how it is moderating groups and stuff. Like, you see critique from people that's unwanted, and, you know, it would damage people to their core. And I'm just like, why, why waste any energy on a comment from someone you've never thought about ever in your life <laughs> like, so don't start thinking about them now like it's a waste of time like 
they thought about you for about five seconds. And then they'll never think about you again. Exactly. They're right. going to go on with their life yeah. and what's what happening. Waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. now, now I just like laugh at stuff like I'm doing the seeing with lasers um, thing with, with old photos, like this new series I'm doing where I'm just putting some filters in Lightroom on the eyes of the models and they're like shooting lasers out of their eyes. And you know, some people look at it and they're like, LOL, this is hilarious. And I'm just like, eh? you know, I didn't make it to be hilarious. But like, if that's how you see it, that's fine. Like, I don't, you know, whereas f four years ago, I would have been like, why are people seeing this as funny? And now I can look at it from like a pragmatic point. It's like, well, yeah, dude, you got lasers coming out of people's eyes. Like, it's kind of funny, you know? I just got over that whole thing. And life's just been uh, just immensely better for me uh, and my mental health for sure mm -hmm. since stepping away from all that. You feel like it's freed you up even to be even more creative and like to pursue <laughs> your goals and your dreams. Or do you feel yeah. like it's like calmed you and you're like, I'm just, I'm really maintaining the life that I want and I'm just happy to be here right now. Yeah. I've always been, I've, I've never been one to pursue my dreams. Like I've honestly, and still to this day, like don't even have a dream. Um, I just don't. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, like right now, like I just moved down to a lake from uh, where I lived in St. Louis for my whole life. And now I have, um, a super small little apartment uh it's got wood paneling it's like straight out of the 60s and i love it because that ties in with my style um and i have my little fishing boat and like i go out every morning and afternoon if i can and go fish and just i don't get internet or cell service in my where i live and i just love it if i can fund that lifestyle for myself like that's all i really need i don't I don't really want anything else to be honest. <laughs> I love the quiet in life. And I think you can see that it reflects I try to reflect that the best I can in my work, especially with my personal work. I just love people just staring off. Um mm -hmm. just like quiet still moments. I just it's so intriguing to me. I do see that and I see that in your wedding portraits. But your yeah. candids are so full of energy and they're yeah. so full of like, people having fun and like movement and yeah, because those are the I mean when it comes down to it, right? Like those are the photos that are remembered by people. Um, like we could all probably put out a survey to our clients when we deliver a wedding to them, and like most everybody's favorite photos are gonna be those candid shots where they're laughing their ass off at a speech or something like those are always my favorite to shoot as well it's like oh god i remember that speech and they they think about how much they laugh they think about looking at the tables out at the reception seeing everyone else laugh they think about the person that gave the speech like it's this it's this intrinsic beautiful thing that like we have the opportunity to give people um and it's also like to tie into that, it's also a direct line to memories of people. Like it's a way for <clears throat> it's a way for the dead to speak to us, right? Mm -hmm. Like we photographs have always been the thing to where like when you want to think about a memory of someone, like you'll pull out a picture of them and like you could look into their eyes and if you know them, like it's a it takes you right into their whole character, their whole existence when they were here. I used to look through my grandmother's old albums and just look at the people i had no idea who they were and yes try and read their expression like who was this person what did they sound like what was their life like were they exactly. happy in their life like what was the shit that went down and that's the whole beauty of photographs like even if you like most of my personal work like on my lofi account like those are all characters in my own secondary world right like my secondary universe so I'm trying to create fragments and memories of these characters, but that has nothing to do with the actual model themselves or the location, or it's all make-believe in my mind. But it's, it's cool because I get to create like all these different characters and um, yeah, kind of create my own memory bank of that universe. Yeah, this this reminds me of this conversation I had with a friend recently, and he knew this girl, and they're they're having like a relationship now, but before they weren't, 
And he always yeah. thought like she was beautiful and he was photographing her and he didn't like feel though anything towards her at that time. So when he was shooting it, he wasn't thinking like romantic thoughts and stuff like, oh yeah, she's beautiful, but that's it. And he was focusing on like what he was creating and the story of her character and that kind of stuff. And even though like he's madly in love with her now, he looks at those photos from back then and he still sees what he felt when he photographed then, which wasn't that he loved yeah. her. But he looks at it, he's like, I don't feel connected to these photos, like how I'm connected to her now, because that's not what I was feeling when I was shooting it. Yeah, it's that it's that direct line again. Like it's, uh, I mean, that's that's proof of it right there, right? Like he was looking at photos of who he's madly in love with now. Yeah. But his memory automatically goes to, wow, I was not into you at all in that way when I was making these photos of you. Yeah. Like, that's such a trip. Like, yeah, so it's so so cool. And then, but then on the flip side, it's like when you're shooting at a wedding, you're like if my couple, if they're not having fun, they're gonna look at this photo no matter how cool it is. But if they're unhappy or they're mm-hmm. miserable, they're gonna look at this photo no matter how beautiful it is. They're not gonna love it. They're just gonna yeah. feel like neutral. Like, yeah, that's great. That's a nice photo. And that's and that's something like uh, as photographers, like we could do our best to try and. Um, try and bring up some emotion out of them, you know, like we can do all the prompts and all the stuff that's out there in the industry. Um, but it's, it's also, we have to separate ourselves. If they're, if they're genuinely like, you know, luckily I think most people are having a blast at their wedding, but if they're genuinely like not into each other or this wedding is like a sham or something like that's not on us. Like we didn't like, well, it's brutal though it's, it's like it's the worst funny. feeling i've definitely had that it's like man like, i have too like i just i don't know what else to do but it's all yeah but exactly like that's it it's like what else could you have done like you would have had them hey guys i need you to fake your whole wedding day so you enjoy your photos when you don't actually enjoy each other's company like that's not our job isn't to be psychiatrists to a point right relationship experts we're there to capture the day and like if something goes sour and something goes bad like yeah i'm not going to sit there and photograph like awful moments um but i'm also not going to try and create some some fake bullshit just for my own like oh this has got to go on my blog or something like, yes that's the last thing that's the last thing you should be thinking about like i'm taking yeah. photos for my portfolio that is not what you should be thinking about when you're no. shooting buddy and when you stop thinking about stuff like that you will absolutely create your best work yes yes like take the pressure off yourself and off of them and they're not performing for you again it goes back to setting expectations right it's like okay you said you liked these photos that were on my website like this one was created i asked i pulled them away from their reception for like 10 15 minutes Mm -hmm. but i always ask you guys like do you want to do this you can say no like it doesn't I'm not going to walk away all pouty and stuff. Like yeah. this isn't, <laughs> I was yes. relying on you guys to do right. this for me. It's like, yes, I, I love what I do and I can't wait to get back and edit some of these photos. But like, this is your wedding day. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. here for my my business. My, I, I'm not like, I, yeah, I, I want to be here your day and capture it in such a way where you're just like, holy shit, that's our wedding day. Like, that's all I want to go for. Is this some of the stuff that you teach in your workshops? I saw on your website, you have a workshop. It's an online one, I think, mm-hmm. called The Last Workshop. Yeah. because That I'm sounds like, ominous. Like the <laughs> last one. Yeah, because I like, it's one of those things, like I had to go through, it was with workshops and presets and stuff. Like I would get so many messages saying like, you need to release something, you need to do this. And then I would release everything with full details and it would just be crickets um who would tell you that you need to release things oh just like fans and followers of my work Uh, like like other photographers right um like oh you need to sell sell these new lofi presets or something like that so i would sell them and like they wouldn't do well at all um which is partly my fault but also i had to look at it and be like well, yeah, if they're not doing well, like, why are you wasting so much energy on this? Like, bring your focus elsewhere. Like, mm. focus your energy on something else. So, yeah, this, like, I, I honestly just called it the last workshop because it's the last, like, full online one I'm doing. Mm. 
and then I'm in the middle of creating like an online workshop where it's going to be like probably close to eight hours of video um, that I'll sell that covers like every single thing that I've learned and that I speak on and try to inspire people. And that'll be kind of the last thing. And then after that, like I'll do a couple speaking things a year, um, but it'll mainly be about my personal work rather than wedding work. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I'm gonna like next year, I'll probably shoot five or six weddings. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna focus mainly on art next year for 2020 for sure. Yeah. So then, are you looking at putting your work in galleries and doing yeah, fine art route? Yeah, I'm gonna see like how how far I can take that. I'm at least gonna again. It goes back to trying, right? It's like I don't have anything to lose. Like the the worst two worst things that can happen is I hear no or I don't hear anything at all. So what's what's the difference? Like there's no harm in trying. Um, so yeah, that's why I started my outsource editing company. So, cause I've outsourced edit for a few photographers for a couple of years now. And I love editing, like not, I, I don't mind it at all. So yeah, right now I've already got like five or six clients that are sending me a weddings. And, um, again, not having internet and cell service in my place, like I'll just turn on a record and make myself a cocktail and just sit in my house and edit. That sounds so I love beautiful. It. So yeah, beautiful. It's, it's, it's so nice and it's the perfect environment for me to really knock out a lot of editing work for clients because um, I think I excel at that too because I'm not emotionally tied to these photos in any way. I'm just a button smasher to edit these photos with their style, with their look. Uh, and it's great. I love doing it. So I think like That'll be my main income, like for next year, that mixed with a few weddings here and there. Mm. So you're just really, it's a win-win, so you're just doing the things that you love to do. But do you get photographers, like, oh, like how do I get Jacob to edit my photos? Because look how good his are, and he's going to look at mine, and like, it's, <laughs> like, man, I'm not as cool as he is. Or uh, um, Yeah, I mean, at the start, it was definitely, there's such like a weird, like gray line between you. When, when you say you, you offer an editing service, some people think like, oh, you can edit my photos like yours. Ah, uh, so like, then they want their photos to look like yours. Right, and it's like, I'm honestly like happy to do that, but that would be a much longer relationship that we would have to form to where do you actually like your photos? Like, do you shoot in the same way I do? Do you shoot in the same lighting situation? Because a, a crappy photo or like a boring photo will be boring no matter how you edit it. Absolutely, yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely ran into like that a little bit, but I, I also think people know that I'm uh, very well-versed in Lightroom with editing. So they know, like I had a client send me two weddings today and she's like, I need these back by Sunday. And I'm just like, like, so for you, I'll have, I'll have one done tonight like, and I just got it an hour ago because oh, yeah I can't sorry. wait to make a you know a whiskey drink and sit there with a record going and just edit photos like it's awesome after I get done fishing <laughs> <laughs> that's that's old work-life balance right there mm -hmm. so you so you started your editing business and that wasn't scary for you at all like you just started it people started asking you or you started offering it but that wasn't yeah. like a big stretch to really like go for that. But with the, yeah. the it's interesting that that was, that was like a comfortable thing for you to do, but kind of like more launching the fine art. It definitely feel like a bit more hesitation in the just going after of that. No, I still absolutely have some nerves and some hesitation with like trying to break into the fine art. If there are other fine artists that are, are like, how, how does this guy, his work is garbage or something? Like, I legit don't give a shit what people think of my work. Like, I, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't even ask. I've never asked for critique. I've never. Because none of it, it like. It, it, it's so subjective. Yeah. And, and not only that, like, it's, it's you're not going to change my mind. Like, if, if I know, like, I've been doing this long enough to, I know if if I place a subject just off center of the frame, like I did that for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't. So if somebody's like, rule of third, oh, they're 
they're not in the center. I'm like, mm. I know. And it got you to look at it harder, I guarantee you, because they are off center. Like, that's what I was going for. I mean, obviously, critique has a place in the world, right? Like, especially for certain art forms. But when it comes to my work, like, I just I just don't ever think about it. So, yeah. Um, I, I usually always have an explanation for why I did something in my work. All right. So you're confident in your art. You're confident in what you're creating and you're the evolution of that and keep on challenging yourself. So then do you feel like you hesitate then in the, like just the interaction of the business side of the art world? I mean, I hesitate with, I'm terrible at the business side of everything I do. <laughs> I, I've always been terrible at it. Um, but I feel like the, the fine art side, like I feel um, when I start doing it, I can, it's going to be more conversations like this, right? mm-hmm. where, where I'm talking about my work. And if I were to have an exhibit somewhere, like I wouldn't even have an artist statement or if they asked me for one, I'd just be like, I am a photographer. I am Jacob. I am yeah, silly like, and mysterious, but mostly silly. I buy yeah, shoes. Buy like, go, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, just go like, come up and talk to me if you want to chat, you know, like I, but in my, my work, like I just wanted to make you feel however it makes you feel like I you know like I don't feel like I need a five paragraph artist statement on why I do things and why like yeah I do it because like it's what I fucking do see this is when you just you have somebody that write it for you you just talk it out and somebody writes it on your behalf yeah you know there's the people no matter what you do in life I feel like they're the people that kind of wish and hope things that that would happen for them and you, you can talk sure. about those things and the people they just go and like make it happen and even that's just like hey this is what I want to do I would really love to work with you or I'd really love to have my work shown in your gallery what would it take for me to make that happen and when people hear that like they respect that like hey this guy's like his own best advocate like he's gung-ho he's hustling or he's like really passionate about really making this happen because those places at the same time they're looking for things right. to sell. Like they are looking for artists. They're looking for work. Like this is also part of their business. And if you're like, hey, I have this great thing I can offer you. Like, yeah. To show you this. What can I do to make it happen? And like, yes, let's have this conversation. Generally. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. the, that's the side I'm working on the most is to just have that assertiveness. Um, yeah. To just put the word out and be like, yo, I love your gallery. Like I'd love to have my stuff hanging on your walls. Tell me what I need to do. Like, yeah. Do I need to do like a contest? Do I need to submit one foot? Like, just let me know. Um, yeah, and that's the stuff I'm definitely building towards right now. To just because yeah. I have confidence in my work, obviously, but it's yeah, it's that hesitation you talked about. It's a new thing, right? So it's like there's always going to be nerves, right? Um, but that's that's part of the fun. Like, it's also because you're excited. Like, hey, this is like oh, yeah, like I, it's. it's it's so fascinating, right? Like the the first let's go where I met you, like my presentation was like more fun and I was I was being silly and stuff, right? But like now it's evolved into like I want people to cry. Like I, that is my goal. Like I want people to feel and I want people to cry because the other workshops that I've spoken at and like I've seen the other speakers, like man, some sometimes shit hits me like a truck. And I just break down. Like I remember Nisha Rossi. Like we were in Detroit last year at Midwest Gathering, and mm-hmm. Brian Morrow was speaking, and he just said one oh, sentence, yeah. and my eyes just, whoa, man! And she just like rubbed my shoulder and was oh. like, "Okay, it's just, yeah, that's the beauty of what we do." Um, and that's why, like at this at this minted convention last week in Vegas, like when I did my presentation, like that was presenting my work to a whole new group of people. Like there were illustrators in there, there were graphic designers um, and photographers, of course. And like, they saw my work for the first time and just, you know, they came up to me afterwards and were just like, why? And uh, I got most of them to cry, like no doubt. <laughs> You're like, yes, crocodile <laughs> tears. <laughs> yeah, and it's not that I enjoy making people cry, I just enjoy making people think about things that are bigger than what they do, bigger than the act of whatever their medium is. I do volunteer work. Um, I take portraits for this women's organization called Bravely. It's a house in St. Louis. 
where women that have been through complex abuse in their lives, so human trafficking, sex trafficking, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, all of those things, it's all they've ever known. That's what they grew up in. And they get to come to this house and live abuse free for two years. And like all their bills are taken care of. They can go to, they can take classes if they want to go to college. Um, if I take portraits for them, and one of the women passed away from an overdose about four months ago. And um, my friend, who's the director there, sent me a message to let me know. And she said, I just want to let you know that when she saw photos of herself and you took of her, she said it was one of the best times she's had in her life. And like to me, it was just, it was a 20 minute portrait session. Like it was, I had a blast too. But to know that I gave someone a little flash of fun in their life, like, whoa, you know, like that's, that's amazing. That's, like we get, and that's what we get to do. So even though it feels like we're not doing anything, like we totally are with some people. I think if that's your intention, people can feel that, right? Like whether it's your intention to give something to them or provide an experience for them. Big time. Yeah. So that's like part of my evolution too. Like that's the that's the phase of evolution I'm in now. It's like what can I what can I create that resonates with people on a larger scale, like a larger thought process rather than just like this is visually interesting. Like no, like get in depth and look and like allow yourself to feel whatever it is. Like if it makes you laugh, that's amazing. Like that's great, right? But if it makes you think about um you know, the way our memories are triggered is fast. It can be a smell, um, it can be a color, it can be a sound. Like, you know, you, you always hear about, like, this smell reminds me of grandma's house or grandpa's house. Like, it's how incredible is that? Like, we get to, we can try and capture that scent, like, in a group of photographs that we create. Like, that's what I always try to go after. And that's just for me too, right? Like, um, like when my grandma passed away last year, I went down and I took some photos around the, her house of all her knickknacks, and because you know nothing had changed in her forty years of living there. Everything was in the same place, always well vacuumed. You know, there was the clean vacuum lines on the carpet. And, um, yeah, so I just went around and took very simple photographs, nothing artful about it, but. Um, there were memories for me that I get to look at and be like, yeah, like, this is grandma's house. Like, this was her. I think you her did place. one with her opening an, a letter. Yeah, that was the first time where I started these, these personal stories. Like she was so excited to read this letter that she received from a younger girl, like thanking her for, um, I forget what the letter was about. My grandma helped her out in some way. And, um, she received this really nice letter and I said, well, I'm gonna take some photos of you opening the letter and reading it. Um, yeah, and it was just like eight photos, I think. And I was just like, damn, I just created a whole story of someone just opening a letter. Like that was it, there was no, there didn't have to be an end to the story. There didn't have mm -hmm. to be, you can just do these fragments. Like you can just capture, like even if it's three photos. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you follow all these amazing Instagram accounts like Nowhere Diary or Somewhere Magazine or something. Mm. Like, it's just photos of things or of a scene. Mm. And you can create like your, your own thought of what that that scene or that thing makes you feel. That's all you ever have to think about. Like, how can I, how can I make this interesting to the viewer and to myself? Because I'm not just thinking about like the viewers of my work like I have to make sure that they see what I'm putting out like no like this is I want to fulfill my cup first and then release it to the world and if it fills up someone else's cup great I know um you have talked about like publicly and openly about struggles in the past but like some ups and downs like we all have and I think mm -hmm. as a creative like we do feel things really deeply and I don't feel, I feel like also as a creative that we're also very like open and expressive about it because we just like yeah. live life here. Like you don't, you know. Hide. Right. But it feels like you're in this really amazing place in your life right now. Like you just feel your energy so calm and you seem very peaceful. 
I think the move to this um, this quieter, kind of slower life has helped me out a lot. And I don't think it hit me until probably a month ago. Um, and I've been down here since like May. So I've been down here a few months now. Um, but I think for me, it was always tied to, I was always struggling in some way, especially financially, like my whole life before I even start, like when I had good, good paying full-time jobs, I would always just like, I was the type where, you know, I think I inherited from watching my dad when I was a kid. Like if he had a nickel, he'd buy something with it. So it's like money to me for the longest time. It's like, oh, if you have it, you get rid of it. You pay your bills. If you have anything left, make sure you go buy stuff with it. Or, and since I moved down here, like I moved from a 2,500 square foot townhouse to a little 600 square foot apartment here. Um, and I just love it. It's like walking into an Airbnb every time I walk home and I uh, walk into my home now because there's just there's no space for all this stuff that I used to just waste so much money on. I always like, say like have less, do more. For me, the biggest comfort is like when I look at my lifestyle and I'm just like in my business, I'm like everything's okay. Like you're you're allowed to go to wake up at sunrise and go fish every day if you want to. Like, it's okay. Um, now, yeah, you're an adult. It, this is your life. You don't yeah. get any reviews. And you actually have yeah. control on how you live it. I feel like with creatives, especially, at least a lot that I've spoken with, like there's a lot of uh, unworthiness issues mm. and undeservedness. And any time I would get like something good in uh, a very abundant way, like I would have to get rid of it because I didn't feel worthy of it, right? It's like this this crazy battle in my mind. And now I'm just like, no, I deserve this shit. Like, yes. As much as yes. anyone does, like, you know? Like, yeah, like we all deserve the good things in life. And I have like little things that I think about when I do start to feel unworthy. I'm like, think about all those assholes on Wall Street that just like, completely ruined people's lives just so they could make more money for themselves you know like well, yeah you deserve you deserve this eight thousand dollars that you're you know yeah. like it's cool man like you're good uh, i just want to take it a tiny bit further um i think on your instagram stories you did say someone asked you what it was i think it was a year what's your year goal and something like that and you said ask me again in december and so do yeah. You, yeah, do you set, do you set, no. yeah, do you no. just like month I, to month? I don't set goals, I, I never will. Um, I mean, I think we all set goals to a point, right? But they're very, very basically uh, weekly, monthly things where it's like, my goals are like, what do I need to make to get through the year? Like that's, that's pretty much it. Like what, what do I need to make every month to get by and save a little? Um, that's my biggest goal in life. I think maybe I just know myself well enough um, where if I bring in too many steps and too much structure, like I'll, I'll get so bored with it. I have to keep things like in the simplest of forms when it comes to things like that. Um, when it comes to more, you know, admin of life type stuff, I have to keep it very simple. So yeah, for me, that's just like, Here's my monthly living costs, um, and here's what I want to save every month. That's, that's pretty much it. Or it's like, oh, I want to try to get to Europe next year. Like little stuff like that. I don't, I just, yeah, I've never been a big dreamer or a big uh, goal setter. Yeah. I feel like half of this is true. I feel like you are a big dreamer, right? Because I think as a creative, and I feel like you're also a romantic person. You can be a dreamer, but maybe goal setter is different. I think you should separate both of those, those two things. Well, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but like even the, even the dreamer part, like, no, not really. Because I, I also always tell people like, I could not be doing photography at all two years from now. Like I could be in a new phase or something else. Um, it's just the, I, I more just hop on the surfboard and ride the ebb and flow of life wherever it takes me. But if you're if you're out on your boat and you're fishing or on the dock and it's sunny and you're having this peaceful moment, you dream, no? 
dream about like the things that you have or things that you would love, like emotions and hope? Uh, I mean, I guess that's a sense of dreaming, right? Like, I, uh, like yesterday, I was having a really good day and I was fishing um, and was having one of those moments. But it was more about like, uh, just taking in that moment. Like, I really wasn't thinking about anything bigger than that. Just like, uh, yeah, sip on my beer and fish and be like, present. It's enjoyable. Yeah. Like, being present is a big part of my thing now after being addicted to social media for so long. I, I remove bugs and insects from my house. Like, I get a paper towel and gather them up and then release them outside. Like, I can't, I can't kill anything. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about the fish? Oh, the fish always catch and release. You don't yeah. keep them? No, God, no. I'm vegan, but I also smoke and fish. But, yeah, whatever. We're all characters and have our quirks in some way. I feel like that should be your quote. I'm vegan, but I still smoke and fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would probably find me some interesting clients if I had that on my... Your bio. Yeah. yeah. Be good. good idea. Is there something you would want to share with our listeners that you could share just one thing with them that was life-changing for you as a creative? What would that be? Start spending energy in places that are worth it and stop wasting it in places that aren't um that's what you know like one of the biggest books of the past probably eight years is like the subtle art of not giving a fuck yeah Uh, (laughs) yeah and like that's a like wow that's a concept that's been around for how long and that book was released it was a bestseller i think especially among entrepreneurial people right um and like that that is just kind of a spice of life like it, it sounds like a negative thing but it's not it's being confident and assertive and knowing when to say no and um knowing how to kind of build your lifestyle to where if like you don't but yeah it's just I'm, I'm not gonna waste my time on things that i used to that like we talk about people making snarky comments on social media or um, people judging you in reality. Like I would say, like find your vision and just just go with it. Like don't don't worry about what other people think of you really ever. <laughs> yeah, because now matters. Yeah, absolutely. Like we, even if you live a long a full long life, like it's we're only here for a short time, right? Like a, a quote that I kind of, it's weird to say, but a quote I kind of came up with that's resonated with people is, if I'm thinking about Instagram on my deathbed, I've been dead for a long time. Invest in people in the real world and have conversations. And, and oh my God, travel, leave your bubbles, leave your bubbles and go learn about people. Like your empathy and compassion will just grow to the extreme. Um, and yeah, it'll make you more human. Like I totally believe in that. If you don't ever leave your bubble, like you don't, you don't know what other people go through. Um, that's what I'll leave people with. You never know what someone's going through. Like just make that a model. Like a letter I usually always bring up. Like it's part of my workshops now. So it was a. Uh, it was a graphic artist from the 60s and 70s named Saul LeWitt. Mm. And he got, he got a letter from his painter friend named Ava Hess. She was struggling with self-doubt. And um, he wrote this brilliant response to the letter. It's just like, stop worrying about all this stuff and just do. Yes, just do. But one of my favorite lines, my favorite line from that letter, his response was, uh, be weird. You deserve to live in the most secret parts of yourself. Oh my God, that yes, yeah. that's so. Can okay, you say it one more time for me? You deserve to live in the most secret parts of yourself. This is how yeah. I feel about I'm um, shooting boudoir. I hate mm-hmm. the term boudoir. Like I really yeah. do. I really don't like it because it it makes me picture things that I don't, I'm not, I'm not against it. I think it definitely has its place and it can be really amazing and empowering and all that. But 
it just I don't I don't personally connect with it like but for me it is allowing people to express the side of themselves they feel like they can't express in everyday life like hey I want to express myself this way but I can't because I'm Stacy or like right. I wish I could be like this but I can't because I'm Stacey. well what is that yeah. thing and like what is like that you want to like act out or express in yourself or feel or whatever it is like what is that thing and let's do that I, I resonate with that again I don't like the term before either but it's like and Cheyenne Gill like I look at people like that and it's like mm-hmm. where nudity is tied to people being stripped down to their their core it's not a mm-hmm. that's true empowerment too. exactly people I you won't believe the amount of times I've been asked because I shoot men women and couples but people yeah. want to know about the men, like especially the men. Like, well, when yeah. you're sh- when you're shooting, like, do you feel attracted to them, or like, do you feel desire? Like, literally nothing. Like, yeah, like nothing. You're, you're in your zone, like you. Yes. Like I'm looking at the light and the position, and I'm like, right. I know that they're attractive. Like I know exactly. that, but I don't. Yeah. I'm not turned on in any way. Like, I'm not right. I can't, like I'm not even in that place. And that's like that's been true of like. Um, so many art forms like throughout centuries, right? Like you still have universities to this day where they bring up a new model or two or three or five and you have to sit there and paint them. It's like, be out of your mind to think that majority of people sitting there are thinking about like how they'd like to take one of the models home or something. Right. They're yeah. sitting there painting. Like they're, they're looking at the same shit we do. Shadows, the light. The contours, the texture, the you can you can see it so clearly. I mean, there there are girls out there that want to be models, and this photographer maybe has however many thousands, whatever followers on Instagram, and like this is gonna like yeah important. This is like a big deal for them, and maybe they're breaking out. But you can tell, you can you can tell. Like I yeah, I've shot with John. He he shot me a couple times, and I've yeah. felt so comfortable, so comfortable, and so like taken care of, and just like relax there was not one part of me that felt like this wasn't yeah. what what it was which was just and about creating what, like an art and intimacy and the way he shoots women way he shoots women is so fucking beautiful oh yeah and that's what like i chatted with two people that shot with him um and they both said the same thing they're like oh no you feel like you're on like a movie set or something yeah His vision is just so so professional yeah like so professional and like and well, but he, you know, what he's creating is not sexual, that is sensual. And, but when yeah. he also the way he poses, I've learned this from him too. Like the way he poses you, it's so, um, it actually has quite a bit of structure. So you don't feel okay. like you're just like moving and like being sexy. It's like chin down, down, down. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So he has like, yeah, because he has a complete like, and like, it's all and about like form, mind, and like eyes mouth stacy relax your mouth i'm like i am my neutral face is smiling <laughs> yeah and that's what like that's what i loved about him too because when i first met him like you just talked to him it's like this dude's like a he's total so dad yeah. he's a total amazing artist but like he's yeah. a dad like he's he a dad he yeah being a dad like yeah. he loves laughing he's yeah he's a very like jovial guy him and i are kind of similar in that sense and you are too like we're we're people that do like to smile and laugh our asses off with others but we're also deep and like but that doesn't mean we have to walk around the world and not be silly i forget exactly what it was but there's something in your presentation where it made me fucking cry and i think it was like something about finding value as a person like photography helps you find value absolutely like you're a good person and that like killed me I think when you have felt like deep sadness um and even now I I hate crying for like when I'm hurt I hate crying because I've cried so much in the past when you feel that you don't you don't want other people to feel it so you're a happy person you want to bring light you want people to be comfortable you want them to feel warm and yeah bring that because you're like I want to lift you up because I know what it's like I really know what it's like to be down yeah I always say like life is crazy, life be crazy, but it's mostly amazing. We're so lucky. Yeah. We're so freaking spoiled. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's lucky that any of us were even born, right? If you look at the yeah. stats, like it's one in billions of chance that we would even exist. So yeah, like you have to, you know, frame your life with a vision similar to that. Like, shit. Yeah. yeah. 
it's just amazing. Live it. I'm just gonna go out there and like grab it, and live it, and feel it, and feel every moment as deeply as possible. And doesn't have to be again like sad and dramatic, but just feel all the things. Oh hell yeah, yeah, like joy. Yes, yeah. And when you're having one of those days, like <clears throat> it sounds so simple, but for me, it's like. So my fall is like completely booked. I think I have eight or nine weddings like in September and October. My, oh, like I started that. to get the final payments coming in, you know? Yeah. And you just start looking at your bank account and you're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, but also, holy fuck. Yeah, I can, buy, I can buy the higher grade of ramen noodles. <laughs> it's just all excellent. I'm know? legit craving um, mac and cheese with hot dogs. Oh, see, I found... I find it's dangerous. Like I'm last week I started trying to eat more healthy vegan style. Cause like people hear vegan, they think like you just munch on apples like a horse or something, you know? And it's like, Oh my God, like there's so much garbage vegan food out there. Yeah. Like that's probably the way I've been for three years since doing this, you know? Really but, unbalanced. Oh yeah. Big time. Like all the, and even some of the like frozen like meat substitutes, like they're more processed than most other shit in the store. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I still eat garbage plenty of times. Um, but it's amazing, like just drinking more water and just eating like whole raw vegetables and preparing. It's just like, wow. well, I'm going to go fish now. Go do that. I'm going to go yeah. eat some ramen noodles with vegan cheese sauce. Yeah, there you go. That sounds That's really the way to do it. Cool.